Hello and welcome to the new session on fluid mechanics where we have had the discussions on Pascal's law, hydrostatic law and solved a few numerical problems to better understand what actually those laws tell us. Now moving ahead, we are about to learn how do we measure pressure. As I have told you, we have five types of pressure. Absolute pressure which has absolute zero or complete vacuum as its base or that actually is the zero from which we measure. And then you have gauge pressure which has atmospheric pressure as its base or that is also called gauge zero. Atmospheric pressure is said to be the gauge zero. All the available gauges that we use to measure pressure have atmospheric pressure as zero. And whichever pressure is below atmospheric pressure, you measured using a gauge mechanical or electronic or some other instruments whichever gives us the pressure below atmospheric pressure are termed as vacuum pressure or negative gauge pressure. Any pressure that is above atmospheric pressure measured using any of the instruments that we call as positive gauge pressure and apart from that we have also discussed about vapor pressure. So we have these five types of pressure. Now we will have to measure the pressure. How do we measure the pressure? Before I get into measurement of pressure, one thing I would like to clear here itself is that in all the studies we, we conduct in the coming classes, we do not measure the atmospheric pressure using any of the gauges that we discuss here because to measure the atmospheric pressure we have a separate gauge called barometer and hence the pressure the atmospheric pressure is also called barometric pressure. So in barometer absolute zero or complete vacuum is taken as the reference or the datum or as zero. From that zero the measurement of atmospheric pressure takes place using barometer and usually the atmospheric pressure is taken as 101.6 kilo pascals or kilo newton per meter square and for all the gauges that we study now and onwards atmospheric pressure is taken as reference or datum and hence it is termed as gauge zero. So whichever instruments that we learn now will have atmospheric pressure as the reference and we use different instruments to measure the pressure and whatever pressure we get will be either above atmospheric pressure or below atmospheric pressure. Now what do we actually mean by it now? How do we measure the pressure? Where exactly do we have pressure? Basically when there is flow taking place we can always measure the pressure in the flow at a given point. So we basically make use of three things to measure the pressure. First one is manometer about which you will extensively study in this chapter and then you have mechanical gauges and the last one is electronic gauges. The mechanical gauges and electronic gauges do have the introductory sessions in this syllabus whereas manometer will be extensively studied. So mechanical gauges and electronic gauges you have already seen, I can quote the example. Whenever you are going in a vehicle and your vehicle tire is punctured, you take it to a nearby shop. If it is not that sophisticated shop, you will have the pressure of the tire checked by a mechanical gauge which will have the dial in it. By the movement of the dial, you will know the pressure available in the tire. And that is the example for mechanical gauge, how it works and rest of the things you can study it later in this chapter. And when you go to check the pre tire pressure in the, usually in the uh, fuel, uh, fuel stations, you will have the facility wherein you will get to see the digital display of the pressure in the tire that is the electronic gauge. See the difference between electronic gauge and mechanical gauge is very simple. Here in the mechanical gauge you will have to read it using the dial. In the electronic gauge the work in the background remains same that signal the, the deflection of the gauge is converted into an electronic signal and displayed in terms of 
numbers that's the only difference and we will uh, study it at the end of this chapter whereas in this class we will take up manometers what a manometer means see in manometers also you have two types simple and differential simple and differential manometers before i get into what actually there i will have to define what manometer means because this is the first time probably you are listening to a term called manometer manometers are defined as the devices that are used to measure pressure of fluid at a point by using the column of fluid which is having same liquid or a different liquid in manometers you have two types simple and differential when you take simple manometer first in case of simple manometers again you have three types simple manometer per se definition is a simple manometer is a glass tube which is having one end open to atmosphere and the other end attached to the point where pressure is to be measured in that you have three types as i have told you one is piezometer the second one is youtube manometer and the last one is single column manometer of which again piezometers you will study a little single column meter, ma column manometer also you will study a little whereas youtube manometer you will study it extensively so what is the piezo what is a piezometer piezometer is the simplest of all manometers it is a single glass tube which is having one of its ends open to atmosphere and the other end connected to point where pressure is to be measured i will show you how exactly it works and i'll move on to youtube manometer youtube manometer is a simple manometer which is having a bent glass tube into u shape a glass tube is taken and it is bent into u shape one end is attached to a point where pressure is to be measured other end is open to atmosphere and single column manometer is an improved version of youtube manometer which will have a reservoir kind of a thing in one of the limbs of the manometer and the other end is open to atmosphere so i'll first take up the piezometer and in case of youtube manometer we will study two cases one case is to measure positive gauge pressure using youtube manometer and the other case is to measure negative gauge pressure or vacuum pressure using youtube manometer and then i will take up single column manometer there are a few concepts that you will have to understand before you learn about those things i'll first take you to piezometer assume that water is flowing through a pipe and i would like to measure the pressure at a point now assume that this is the pipe water is flowing through this pipe and you will need to measure pressure at this point so what i actually do is i will open a hole in the pipe and i will attach the piezometer one end of the piezometer to this point and the other end is open to atmosphere to represent that what i will do is i will take the cross section of this pipe how does the cross section of the pipe look like it will look like a circle so i will represent the cross section of the pipe like this and i have kept this part open this is the point where i am going to attach the one end of piezometer so i will attach the piezometer to this part and piezometer is nothing but a simple graduated glass tube one end of which is connected to point where pressure is to be measured that is here assume that this point is a and it is full of water and other end of the piezometer is kept open to atmosphere now depending upon the pressure at point a there will be rise in the level of liquid in the piezometer assuming that you have the positive gauge pressure here that means pressure in excess of atmosphere because if it is open to atmosphere what happens is the pressure at this point is nothing but atmospheric 
only if the pressure at point A is in excess of atmospheric pressure, there will be rise in the level of liquid in this tube, say H. Using this column of liquid, I can measure what actually the pressure is. What is the relationship between pressure and head? This is nothing but head. So, you know that pressure P is equal to rho into G into H, where rho is nothing but density of the liquid, G is nothing but acceleration due to gravity or put together rho G is specific weight of this liquid, H is nothing but the head. So, this is the simplest of piezometer because you are only taking one reading that is head using which you will get the pressure. So, this is the measurement of pressure at a single point. Now, this is uh, this is calculation of pressure you by balancing the liquid in the pipe by the same liquid as the definition says manometers or devices which are used to measure pressure at a point by the column of liquid having same liquid or a different liquid. Now, this was balanced by the same liquid. Now, I will take the case of U-tube manometer which will have to have a manometric liquid inside it to measure the pressure of the liquid which is flowing. Now, I will take up that case. So, simple U-tube manometer, simple U-tube manometer. Again, there are two cases in it because one is to measure positive gauge pressure, the other is to measure negative gauge pressure or vacuum pressure. So, to measure positive gauge pressure, I will first case, let me take it as positive gauge pressure. I will show you how it works and I will first also draw the manometric liquid in the manometer. How will be the YouTube manometer look like? So, I will have to first draw U tube that is a glass tube bent into U shape and I have purposefully drawn the limbs of the manometer at different heights because it actually does not matter because if both the ends are open, both the ends are open to atmosphere that means atmospheric pressure is on both the limbs. And now, I will start filling the manometric liquid into it. I will tell you what actually manometric liquid is and what are its properties just in a while. First, I will start filling the manometric liquid. By virtue of same pressure being on both the ends, the level of liquid inside both the limbs have to be same. I repeat by virtue of both the ends being open to atmosphere. That means, both the ends are under atmospheric pressure only. Once the pressure is same, you know that pressure is nothing but equal to rho into g into h and rho g is specific weight of the liquid. Since specific weight of the liquid you are pouring is not changing, only thing is h. If pressure is same on both the ends, just observe here pressure on this end and this end are same and specific weight cannot change. For P to be equal to rho into G into H, in this case H has to be same. That means, if it is open to atmosphere, pressure on both the limbs are same and hence the liquid that you pour inside as manometric liquid will have to have, will have to form same level, will have to form same level. I will show you that. So, how do, how do you choose a manometric liquid is the next question and what are the properties that a manometric liquid should have. So, what is the requirement of a manometric liquid? All those things will be now answered. Now, assume that you will have to measure the pressure of flowing water. Now, if it is, if it can be measured using piezometer, see piezometer has its own limitations. If the pressure is too high, the height of the piezometer should be great and there is a possibility of capillary action also taking place and hence it is not possible to depend solely on piezometer to measure the pressure. In that case, you will have to go for YouTube manometer and you will also have to use manometric liquid 
to measure the pressure. How does it work? Now, assume that the pressure of water is higher than the atmospheric pressure. Of course, it has to be. Now, when the atmospheric pressure is exceeded by the flowing fluid, what will actually happen? This end is open to atmosphere. Assume that I will join this to point where pressure is to be measured. Because the pressure is greater, the water will tend to push this monometric liquid. What happens then? Once this monometric liquid is made to push, the volume of liquid is not going to change and hence the level of fall or the height of fall in this limb has to be equal to the height of rise in this limb. I repeat, once the pressure is high here than the atmospheric pressure, it tends to push the monometric liquid. Once it pushes, what will happen? There will be a fall in the level of liquid in the left limb. And since the volume of liquid is not changing, volume of liquid is also not changing and area of the tube is also not changing. You know that volume is nothing but area into height. Since volume is not changing and area is not changing, height cannot also change. And hence, the height of fall in the left limb must be equal to height of rise in the right limb. And once you take the case of vacuum pressure or negative gauge pressure, what will actually happen? You can take the example of vacuum cleaner. How does it work? By virtue of creation of vacuum, it sucks the waste that you are supposed to, waste or dust that you are supposed to clean off. Similarly, when there is vacuum pressure created in the pipeline and you are going to measure the vacuum pressure using this YouTube monometer, you will attach one end of the monometer to the point where vacuum pressure is to be measured and you will keep this end open to atmosphere. The pressure, vacuum pressure is less than atmospheric pressure and hence it sucks. So, when the monometric liquid is sucked up in the left limb, the height of rise of liquid in the left limb must be equal to height of fall of liquid in the right limb because of the same reason that volume of the liquid is not going to change as well area of both the limbs is not changed and hence height has to remain same. So based on this concept, now I will tell you how exactly the YouTube monometer works. Prior to that one simple point that I will have to mention the properties of this monometric liquid, how do we actually choose? Now, monometric liquid should be usually having higher specific gravity than the liquid whose pressure is to be measured. Point number one. Point number two, when you are measuring the pressure of a liquid, the monometric liquid should not undergo any chemical reaction with that. And it should not also mix with the liquid whose pressure is going to be measured. That means you cannot have milk as the monometric liquid for measuring the pressure of water because you will not get any reading. They will get mixed. So it has to be immiscible. Monometric liquid should be immiscible with the liquid whose pressure is going to whose pressure is to be measured. And then it should not undergo any thermal variation. That means a monometric liquid used in summer should not behave differently than the same liquid which behaves differently in winter. So, it should not undergo that thermal variation. So, keeping all these things in mind, you will take the mono, you will choose the monometric liquid to measure the pressure. And moving ahead, in most of the cases, when you are measuring the pressure of a fluid, mercury is taken as the monometric liquid for the sole reason that it is said to be liquid metal. It is having the highest specific gravity amongst liquids, which is equal to 13.6. And hence, it will always be immiscible with other liquids. It will always have higher specific, specific gravity than other liquids. And if it is not going to chemically react with that liquid, it is good to go with that liquid. Also, one more property that monometric liquid should possess is that it should be sensitive enough to measure the pressure. You cannot have liquids that behave abruptly with the pressure. It has to actually be giving you the value of pressure depending upon the variation of head. So, 
based on this we will choose the monometric liquid now i have taken youtube i have told you another concept that wherein the two limbs are open to atmosphere both the limbs are under same pressure and hence the liquid you pour into that will have to form the same level in both the limbs you must also remember this now such youtube filled with a monometric liquid is used to measure the pressure at a point which is positive gauge pressure assume that that point is a and it is filled with some liquid which is having specific gravity since i have named that point liquid as a or i will simply name it as one liquid one s1 density of rho1 specific weight of gamma 1 these are the properties of this liquid i have told you that it is in excess of the atmospheric pressure the pressure of flow is in excess of atmospheric pressure i will also take a monometric liquid which is having specific gravity greater than that of the liquid whose pressure is being measured density be rho 2 and specific weight be equal to gamma 2 now what actually happens when it is positive gauge pressure for this purpose i have brought a simple experimental tube i will come very near to the camera so that you can visualize this observe this you have a tube bent into u shape that means both the ends are open to atmosphere so what what has happened irrespective of the height at which you keep them irrespective of the height at which you keep the two limbs now i will intentionally have at different levels so what is happening you can observe though they are at different levels the level of liquid in the tube can you observe here the level of liquid in the tubes are in level are at the same level i'll bring it back to same level still the level of liquid in the tubes are at the same level i'll reduce the level here still still you can observe here the level of liquid in both the limbs are same so that is what i have done here i have taken this to be a, an example for representing manometer now i have a manometer filled with manometric liquid now this end is open to atmosphere and the left limb is connected to point where pressure is to be measured for better understanding what i will do is i will take this to here see you can observe here this is the exact representation that i wish to give when you measure when you when you connect this point the left hand side of mine when you connect this to point where pressure is to be measured what is actually happening because the pressure in the left limb is greater obviously that will push the pressure due to flow of water will make the monometric liquid pushed and there will be a fall of level of liquid i'll show you now if you want I will come very near to it. See, observe here. I will push. Can you observe the rise now? I will repeat it. I am giving pressure in excess of atmos atmospheric pressure. Towards my left, if you observe, you have atmospheric pressure. Now, I am giving pressure in excess. That means, in excess of atmospheric pressure. You, you observe the tube now. Can you see the rise? Yes, that is what I wanted you to observe. Because of that pressure in excess of atmospheric pressure, the liquid will flow up to say some level. I will remove that. Now, I will have to remove that in order to show that to you. So, this part of the glass tube is also now filled with the same liquid. But where has this escaped, the monometric liquid? Since the volume has not changed and the area of these two tubes do not also change, height has to remain same. That means height of fall in the left limb must be equal to height of rise in the right limb. So 
ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಎಷ್ಟು ಕಡಿಮೆ ಆಗಿರುತ್ತೋ ಅಷ್ಟು ಮಾನೋಮೆಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಲಿಕ್ವಿಡ್ಡು ಈ ಕಡೆ ರೈಟ್ ಲಿಂಬಲ್ಲಿ ಮೇಲೆ ಹೋಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಫೈನಲ್ ಮಾನೋಮೆಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಅರೇಂಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡನ್ ಈಸ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಎ ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬ್ ಮಾನೋಮೀಟರ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಅನ್ ಎ ಮಾನೋಮೆಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಲಿಕ್ವಿಡ್ ಇನ್ ಇಟ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಒನ್ ಎಂಡ್ ಟು ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ವೇರ್ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಇಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಮೆಜರ್ಡ್ ಅಲೌಡ್ ದಿ ಅದರ್ ಎಂಡ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಓಪನ್ ಟು ಅಟ್ಮಾಸ್ಫಿಯರ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಅಟ್ಮಾಸ್ಫಿಯರಿಕ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಫ್ಲೋ ವಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಟ್ಮಾಸ್ಫಿಯರಿಕ್ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಇಟ್ ಪುಷ್ ದಿ ಮಾನೋಮೆಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಲಿಕ್ವಿಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಲಿಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಾಲ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಲಿಮ್ ಈಸ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ರೈಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ರೈಟ್ ಲಿಮ್ ನಾವು ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಶೋ ಯು ಹೌ ಡು ವಿ ಮೆಜರ್ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಾನೋಮೆಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಅರೇಂಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಚೂಸ್ ಎ ಡೇಟಮ್ ಲೈನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಡೇಟಮ್ ಲೈನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೌ ಡು ಐ ಚೂಸ್ ದಿ ಡೇಟಮ್ ಲೈನ್ ಯು ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಒನ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಹಾರಿಸಾಂಟಲ್ ಲೈನ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಚೇಂಜ್ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಹಾರಿಸಾಂಟಲ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೆನ್ಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಎ ಲೈನ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಎ ಹಾರಿಸಾಂಟಲ್ ಲೈನ್ ಇನ್ ಸಚ್ ಎ ವೇ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಬಿಲೋ ದಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದಿ ಸೇಮ್ ಲಿಕ್ವಿಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಡೇಟಮ್ ಲೈನ್ ಸರ್ಚ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಟ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ವೇರ್ ಇನ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಡ್ರಾ ಎ ಹಾರಿಸಾಂಟಲ್ ಲೈನ್ ಅಕ್ರಾಸ್ ದಿ ಮಾನೋಮೆಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಅರೇಂಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಲಿಕ್ವಿಡ್ ಬಿಲೋ ದಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಿ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಡ್ರಾ ಎ ಲೈನ್ ಸೇ ವೈ ವೈ ಎ ಹಾರಿಸಾಂಟಲ್ ಲೈನ್ ವೈ ವೈ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವ್ ದಟ್ ಬಿಲೋ ವೈ ವೈ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದಿ ಸೇಮ್ ಲಿಕ್ವಿಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಹೈಟ್ ಇನ್ ಬೋತ್ ದಿ ಲಿಮ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಡೇಟಮ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಯು ನೋ ದಟ್ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲೈನ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಸೇಮ್ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲೈನ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಸೇಮ್ ದಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಸೇ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಅಬೌವ್ ವೈ ವೈ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಲಿಮ್ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಬಿ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಅಬೌವ್ ವೈ ವೈ ಇನ್ ದಿ ರೈಟ್ ಲಿಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಗೋಲ್ಡನ್ ರೂಲ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಯು ಇನ್ ಸಾಲ್ವಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಲಾಡ್ ಆಫ್ ನ್ಯೂಮರಿಕಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದಿ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಮೆಜರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಐ ರಿಪೀಟ್ ಹೌ ಡಿಡ್ ಯು ಚೂಸ್ ದಿ ಡೇಟಮ್ ಲೈನ್ ಡೇಟಮ್ ಲೈನ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಹಾರಿಸಾಂಟಲ್ ಲೈನ್ ಚೋಸನ್ ಅಕ್ರಾಸ್ ದಿ ಮಾನೋಮೆಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಅರೇಂಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಬಿಲೋ ವಿಚ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಲಿಕ್ವಿಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಹೈಟ್ ಇನ್ ಬೋತ್ ಲಿಮ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಚೂಸ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ನೋ ದಟ್ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ದಿ ಹಾರಿಸಾಂಟಲ್ ಲೈನ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹೆನ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಅಬೌವ್ ದಿ ಡೇಟಮ್ ಲೈನ್ ವೈ ವೈ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಲಿಮ್ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಬಿ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಅಬೌವ್ ದಿ ಡೇಟಮ್ ಲೈನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ರೈಟ್ ಲಿಮ್ so i will first write that which will help you understand this concept what is that pressure above pressure above datum in left limb pressure above datum in the left limb must be equal to pressure above datum in right limb once you write this how do i know what pressure means you know that pressure is nothing but equal to rho into g into h so what are all the pressures we have in the left limb observe here you have already pressure at point a which needs to be measured so above the left limb you have pressure at a and as well you have pressure due to a column of liquid of height say i'll name this as h1 so you have pressure generated because of this liquid column how do you know that liquid column exerts pressure you know that pressure increases in the downward direction now you have liquid for this side that only means to say that at this point pressure is due to liquid column of height h1 and from here to here there is no variation of
which I will be extensively using throughout this chapter, which is the easiest option to write the, pre, write the pressure equation and measure the pressure using the monometric system. So, first, pressure above the datum in the left limb. What is that? Pressure at point A, P A. Horizontal direction, no variation, you already know. When you come vertically downwards, pressure increases. That is what hydrostatic law has told us. Plus, what is the pressure because of this liquid column? It is nothing but rho 1 g h 1 because you know that pressure is nothing but rho into g into h. So, pressure at this point must be equal to rho 1 into g into h 1. This must be equal to pressure above the datum in the right limb. So, you have only liquid column of height h 2 with the heavier liquid. So, pressure generated is rho 2 g into h2 so you wanted to find out what is the pressure at this point so pressure at a is given by if you observe carefully rho 2 g h2 minus rho 1 g h1 this is the equation to find the positive gauge pressure using the monometric system youtube simple youtube monometer but I have, as I have told you, I will now let you know how do you find out the pressure using gauge equation and I will also let you know what is the concept of a gauge equation. What is P? P is nothing but pressure. Pressure is nothing but rho into g into h and by virtue of the problems you have solved in the previous class, you know that you can keep the pressure generated by any liquid in terms of head of water. How do we do it? I repeat, you can keep the pressure generated by any liquid in terms of head of water. How do we do it? Just by dividing the pressure by specific weight of water. Just by dividing the pressure by specific weight of water, you convert pressure generated by any liquid into head of water. And now if you observe, what is this rho 2 g h 2 and rho 1 g h 1? Here the variables are h2 and h1 as well rho 1 and rho 2. What are rho 1 and rho 2? If you go for if you go to the basics, what is density? Density can be written with the help of specific gravity. What is specific gravity? Specific gravity of given liquid is equal to density of given liquid by density of standard liquid. That only means to say that density of given liquid must be equal to specific gravity of given liquid multiplied by density of standard liquid. So, this can be written as rho 2 can be written as what? If you observe rho 2 is nothing but S2 that is specific gravity of liquid 2 multiplied by density of water. Similarly, what is rho 1? Rho 1 is nothing but S1 into rho w. Rho w is nothing but what? Specific, uh, sorry, density of water. What you have here? G. So, rho 2 can be written as S2 into rho w into G. Here, rho 1 can be written as S1 into S1 into rho w into G. That means, in all the three terms, in all the three terms, you can take out density of water and G outside. Because, if you convert this pressure into head of water, you will have to divide it by rho w into g. Here you readily have rho w into g. Here also you readily have rho w into g. So, from the entire equation, you can take out rho w into g. And whatever is left is nothing but only head of water. This is nothing but called the gauge equation. To write the gauge equation, you have a few things that you will have to remember. So, you will have to convert all the absolute pressures, if at all given, into atmospheric pressure. You must know that. What is an absolute pressure? It will have the complete vacuum mass datum. What is atmospheric pressure? It will have, sorry, what, what is gauge pressure? It will have atmospheric pressure as the datum. So, you will have to convert any absolute pressure if given in the problem to gauge pressure. That is the first point. And then, you will have to consider all the given pressures in terms of 
head of water. You will also have to keep the unknown pressure in terms of head of water. Say for example, in this case itself, consider the pressure at point A which needs to be calculated as head of water at that point. So let HA be the head of water at this point and, and you will have to move you will have to start from one end and move towards the other end keeping in mind the following things in the horizontal direction there is no variation of pressure in the vertically downward direction since the pressure increases take it as positive and here you always know that since the level of liquids are same for the same height you will have no variation in pressure and going upwards pressure is decreasing and hence take it with a negative sign. This is how you write the gauge equation. Also remember in the air column, observe here there is nothing that means you have air. There is no variation either in positive or either in horizontal direction or in vertical direction. So now how do I write the gauge equation? By first, first step is to convert all the pressures into head of water. Now I know that pressure at this point is Pa. So convert that into head of water at that point. How did I do that? HA is nothing but pressure at A divided by rho W into G. By dividing any pressure by specific weight of water, you will get the head of water HA. Moving in the horizontal direction, no variation in pressure. Moving downwards is positive because there is an increment in the pressure. You have S1 as the specific gravity into H1. S1 into H1. What I have done from here is I have taken rho W into G outside. S1 into H1. From here to here no variation. Moving in the upward direction you have minus. Moving in the upward direction you have minus S2 into S2 into H2 is equal to 0. What I actually wanted was HA. HA is equal to send it to the other side s2 h2 minus s1 h1 how do i convert this h into pressure at a you have taken out rho w into g from the uh, entire equation so you multiply it by rho w into g you will get pa therefore pa is equal to rho w g into ha where ha is nothing but this how have you achieved this ha if you observe this equation which I had previously written, from that PA you have divided by rho WG. Rho 2 GH2 you have divided it by rho WG. Rho 1 GH1 also you have divided it by rho W into G. That is what is this equation. So when you divide PA by rho WG, you will get HA. When you divide rho 2 GH2 by rho WG, you will get S1 H1. When you divide rho 1 GH1 by rho WG, you will get S2 H2. That is the reason why at the end when you want to get PA, you will only multiply it by rho W into G. That gives you the equivalent pressure. Now this was about finding out positive gauge pressure using simple YouTube manometer. Before I end this class, in a simple way, I will now tell you how do you measure negative gauge pressure or vacuum pressure using this simple YouTube manometer. So I will rub this part, simple YouTube monometer, I will take this as negative gauge pressure. How does the setup change? I will show that. I will, cons I will repeat all the steps so that it sits firmly in your mind. First I will take a YouTube. Since both the ends are open to atmosphere, the liquid I fill will definitely be at the same level in both the limbs. We will have same liquid for same height in both the limbs. Now I will attach this to point where pressure is to be measured. I have told you that this is negative gauge pressure or vacuum pressure. This end is open to atmosphere. You have pressure 
which is less than atmospheric pressure, what will happen now is this will, again I will write all those things, this is having specific gravity S1, density rho 1, specific weight gamma 1, similarly monometric liquid has a specific gravity of S2, density of rho 2, specific weight of gamma 2. Since this has vacuum pressure which is less than atmospheric pressure, the level of liquid, monometric liquid in the left limb will rise. Since it has raised in the left limb, there has to be a fall in the right limb. So, for how much? Fall for how much depth? It has to be equal to the height of rise. Why? Why it has to be equal to height of rise? It is because volume of the liquid has not changed and area of these two limbs are same. Volume is nothing but area into height. Since volume and area have not changed, height cannot change. So, height of rise must be equal to height of fall. So, remaining part will be filled by the liquid whose pressure is to be measured. Now, what, what will I have to do? I will have to write the gauge equation to this setup which will help me in finding out the pressure. Let the pressure at A be equal to H A meters of water. How did I get that? By dividing P A by rho W into G. So, I will also have to choose the datum. How do I choose the datum? Datum line is a horizontal line below which in both the limbs you have the same liquid. Let A, let Y, Y be the datum line. So, now once you start writing the gauge equation, start from this point. Let the pressure at A be kept as H A meters of water. Moving in the horizontal direction, there is no variation in pressure. But when you come down, you have liquid with specific gravity S1 for a height of H1 and monometric liquid for a height of H2 in the left limb and there is nothing above the datum line in the right limb. Now, HA is the pressure at this point moving in the horizontal direction, no variation. Coming downwards is positive, so plus specific gravity of this liquid is S1 for a height of H1 still moving in the same direction. So, it is positive. So, you have liquid of specific gravity S2 for a height of H2 and from the datum line no variation till the datum line in the next in the right limb and above that you have nothing, you have nothing on the right limb. So, this must be equal to 0. So, you wanted to find out the pressure at A. So, HA is equal to minus S1 H1 minus S2 H2. If you have to measure pressure, multiply it by rho W into G that is nothing but specific weight of water rho W into G into HA. Negative sign just indicates it is vacuum pressure. I hope these basic concepts are reached, have reached you and if you have any doubts you can always get back to me and in the coming classes we will go with further details on manometers. Thanks for the patient listening. Good day.